Check. All right, seems to be working, guys. Please let me know if that is the case, if the audio is good, and also if the video is good. Today, I have a couple of things I want to talk about. And uh, the first one is white label products. And um, the reason that I wanted to talk about it is because I had heard uh, Spromatheus talking about it with this guy right here. This is the Me Coffee Apex. This is also known as the Turin Legato, as the Gemalai, as the ABX in Hungary. This is known in many places around the world under different names. And then we've also got this guy here, this grinder. This is a new DF54 grinder. It's also a white label product. So Me Coffee can sell this as well as, uh, well, Turin or really any other brand that gets a hold of the manufacturer and says, hey, I want to order a bunch. Please put my label on it and I'll buy them from you. So that's kind of what I want to talk about today and whether you guys think this is good or bad. And then I want to talk about this pan right here. So why am I going to talk about a pan? We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. And then also I've got this out in Nano, and it came with this Nano Basket Plus kit. And I wanted to give that a shot too and just see how it works out. I've never tried it before. Let's unbox it and give it a shot. So let me clean up here just a little bit first. And in fact, what we're going to do is um, talk about, let's just talk about the Gaja first. So I got this standby at the top. Huh, okay, that's for my camera. <laughs> so I got this Teflon coated pan here. And, uh, you know, I've used a lot of different kinds of pans. I've used ceramic pans. I've used iron cast pans, all different types. We eventually keep going back to this one because the stuff doesn't stick to it. But it comes with a disadvantage. Eventually, this stuff scrapes off or it just grades over time and it comes off on its own. And eventually, I throw the pans away. And um, I think we're kind of running into the same issues here with the boiler gate for Gaja. A lot of people have been asking me in the comments if my Gaja is doing that. And I can say, no, it's not because I don't have the Evo model. I have the older model. That model did not come uh, with that boiler coating yet. So let me move this over. So the issue is, and what a lot of people are saying is that they're having problems that the, the coating on the inside of the boiler of their Gaja Classic Pro Evo is starting to come off and it's ending up in their cup as little black specks. I'd like to show a photo, but I don't own any of those photos myself, so I can't show you. But I think some of you have probably dealt with this issue. And maybe you can write into the comment section if you own one of those new Gaja Classic Pros and if you're having that problem or not. But as for me, I'm not going to buy one of those new Gajas until they either use a surface coating that doesn't erode over time or just do away with the coating in general. So the one I have is made out of aluminum. A lot of people also want to avoid aluminum. Maybe that's the reason that they put the coating on there. I don't really mind, but I don't use it all the time. I mean, I guess one thing you have to consider is that Italians have been using this guy for like ever, <laughs> this uh, Bialetti, right? So this has always been made out of aluminum. And if it's so bad for you, I would guess that Italians would be suffering the consequences by now. So that's the reason I'm not so concerned, but I also, you know, I spread out my usage over a lot of machines. So anyway, that is the boiler gate. And um, I don't know, what do you guys think about it? I, I don't want to, to slander any company or bring bad light on Gaja. I do think it's too bad. I like Gaja. And it's kind of a shame that they run into this issue. But what do you guys think? The other, um, the second subject that I wanted to go over today before we get to the unboxing is I want to talk about move this guy up here. White label products. So white label products are, as I mentioned, the ones that any, any sales team, any sales company can buy usually from Asia and sell under their own brand label. And so you have the manufacturer decoupled from the actual maker, but they do a fine job. So from a quality standpoint, I think they're totally, they're totally fine. Uh, they do what they're supposed to do. They seem to be made of good quality as far as my estimation is concerned. 
and I have no problem using them. Of course, the issue is how is the longevity? Nobody knows, and there's no there's no origin behind it. There's no heritage. So, if you would buy something else from Ranchilio, from Gaja, from Profitech, from Eureka, there's heritage there. Eureka has got over a hundred years of heritage. In this, you don't even actually see who the real maker is, and that's a shame. But, but on the other hand, you get it for cheap. And uh, then we got this Me Coffee Apex here as another white label product. And the one thing that I want to mention, hi Kev, by the way, nice to see you. The one thing that I want to mention about this is a lot of creators on YouTube have been calling this the new DF of espresso machines. I disagree with that because as far as I understand it, these are two different companies in China making two different products. This has actually also been around for a long time. This has been around longer than this has, as I understand. So they've been selling this in the Asian market for years. They've been selling this in Hungary for a number of years. And Caf Messino in Spain has bought these and put their own their own board on it, made an app for it already years ago. So this is not really a new product. It's just maybe configured in a little bit different way. But in general, it's been around a long time and is made from a different company than this one. So no, this is not a DF machine. This has just got the same sales team behind it as does the yeah, the grinders, the DF grinders, for example, or the SD grinders. So I'm going to put this down. And I just kind of wanted to get that off my chest as far as the, the white label products are concerned. And I hope that brought you a little bit of clarity. And something to consider is that Costco, for example, has been using white label products also for a long time. They will contact the manufacturer and say, hey, we want you to make basically the same product. Maybe make a few tweaks to it, but put it in our box. We want it in the Kirkland box. And then they sell it for cheaper. So that's also a kind of white label thing happens in grocery stores all the time. But anyway, so here's, here's the interesting thing. Let's go ahead and open this guy up and... Um, Let's see how this works. I think this is going to be a really interesting kind of competitor to the um, the Pico Presso. So let's open up this box and see how this guy works. Coffee Kev, by the way, says that the coating is not affecting all models. I don't I don't know. I don't know how many models are being affected. But anyway, so we got some directions here. We've got what looks to be a uh, basket holder. Got a tamper. We got a dosing funnel. Nice magnetic too. And we've got huh. That's interesting. Okay, I thought this was unpressurized, and I guess that it is. I don't know if you can tell. There's one single hole there, but it's a bigger hole. Looks like they drilled it out, kind of like on what I did in one of my DeLonghi Dedica videos. So it's just, hmm, maybe that's to keep things clean. It's not exactly pressurized, I'm thinking, but maybe still a little bit. So that's what you got there, and um, a little WDD2. WDT tool. So let's give this guy a shot. I'm going to grind up some beans right away. I got 15 grams. These are pretty dark roast. It's mostly Robusta, 70% Robusta in there. Hey, thanks for that comment there, FL. I'm glad that you're having a good time with your coffee, with your DeLonghi. Was a little too much? Should be on a blooper roll. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this because it takes like almost five minutes um, before it gets going. So we can do our puck prep in the meantime. I am really liking this DF54, by the way. It's awesome that it's got this, this curved or this diagonal catch cup holder so that the grounds really go in there nicely. So yeah, I've been using this quite a bit every day. And I also really like the deionizer in there. It makes for really nice fluffy grounds. Pretty much clump free, static free. So that's nice. Let's go ahead and uh oh, look at that. It's got two magnets on it. But this guy is apparently not magnetic. That's too bad. All right, so I got my 15 grams in there. Let's do a little WDT. Hey, hello to you in Prague, Jorge. Nice to see you online. And I just do these, these live videos uh, spontaneously when I have a few minutes. And when I feel like oh, I just want to have a coffee, then you guys can join me for a coffee. All right, so this is what we're working with. I don't know how well you can see it. And now I'm going to tamp. Oh, that's a nice tight fit. I like it when it's real tight. That way, nothing gets on the edges. All right, so that's what our puck looks like now. Let's go ahead and twist that in there. Oh, there we go. Hopefully that's right. I don't think that's right. Oh crap. I might be missing something. You hear it rattling? Shouldn't be rattling. Hey Mike, sorry about them lions. I was really hoping the Lions were going to beat the 49ers. I don't like the 49ers. Maybe this. Uh oh. <laughs> Does this have to go on here as like a shower screen? No, that doesn't really fit on there. Huh. Okay. Should have read the directions first. Well, I think it's going to make a big mess. What I think about the Prima Donna Soul, I think it's probably nice. I haven't tried it myself. Place a shower screen on top of the doser, ensuring it sits securely. Which one is the which one is the shower screen? Should be this one. It doesn't fit though, the shower screen does not fit. Maybe this one, oh, there we go. Thank goodness. Oh, here we go, nice. Okay. Uh, so the Prima Donna Soul is essentially, to me it looks really like the, um, what is that called again? The Dynamica Plus. But then there's a Prima Donna Soul and there's the Aleta Explorer. I don't remember if the Prima Donna Soul comes with a grinder that uh, adjusts itself electronically. That might be the one. And if so, then that's pretty awesome. But I haven't tried it myself, to be honest with you. So I can't really say too much about that. But it's probably nice. The DF54. Yeah, I think it's going to be available in Europe uh, the end of March. So, hi from Frankfurt. You got the Sage Barista Express Impress. I'm glad. I'm glad. You know what? What's so funny, guys? I'm uh, Lately, I've had the DF54 and the DF83 upstairs in our kitchen. And uh, I have the Sage Dual Boiler up there. And my wife is not liking it because it's a lot more work. It's a much longer, more cumbersome workflow. And she says, Tom... Just bring back the Express Impress. That's her favorite one. That's the only one that she wants. So, Brad, I'm glad that you like uh, these live videos. I like to do them. I mean, it's easy. I hope that the quality is good enough that the that I don't have issues with the network synchronizing. 
Okay, it's just about to come out. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there's just a one little hole in the basket, so we're not going to see beautiful bottomless shot. We should see just kind of stream out like chocolate would be my guess. Should have come out by now. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. That's pretty cool. It actually looks pretty, pretty fancy. <laughs> it looks like it looks like a pool of chocolate. If you've ever seen those, like I was at the expo recently in Stuttgart, and they had this like chocolate thing. This like chocolate fountain that just kept it dripping, and that's what this looks like. That is pretty nuts. Was that it? I guess I should have put more water in there. Oh no, there's still water in there. Keep going. I guess uh I guess it's on strike. So anyway, let's just see how it tastes sometime. As you can see, full full crema. It is, as I mentioned, 70% Robusta, so you're going to get, like, super-duper crema. The question to me is, like, how hot is it? That one's not very good. Um, actually, I'm getting quite some caramel, surprisingly, but it's just it's not very hot. I think maybe for this machine, I have to grind more coarse. I have it uh, set up right now for the dual boiler with a pre-infusion. So I'll probably have... Oh, it's pretty bitter, actually. The first sip was good. The subsequent sip's not very good. It's definitely not hot enough. But um, I think I need to give this guy a full charge, and I probably should grind a little coarser. But I'm going to keep on experimenting with that over time and and i'll give this uh kit a review i actually have had it for a long time but i don't think that this is on sale anywhere does anybody know if this out in uh fancy nano basket plus is available as a kit anywhere i couldn't find it um i'll answer a couple questions and then uh we'll close the video tom have you ever tried the fellow Prismo add-on for the arrow. Oh no, I haven't. I I have not. I should probably give that a whirl. I like um the products from Opus, I mean from Fellow are pretty cool. Good day from Oz. Is that Australia? Leon asks, hey Tom, would you purchase the turn legato over the GCP? I've been debating on purchasing one of those. Uh it works. It works better. It has uh the Legato has many more features. You know, it's got two two different temperature groups. You got the boiler for espresso, and you got the thermal block for your uh, milk steaming, which is nice. Not only to keep them separate, and the fact that you don't have to cool one up and down all the time, but it's also good because you don't waste as much water doing that, and um, you have therefore also unlimited steam. So that's nice. It's got a manometer. It's got a PID installed. So for just about the same price, it's definitely way better. Uh, also, the results I've been getting have been very good. And it's more ergonomic, too. So I would say it is ahead of the Gaja Classic Pro in every regard except for heritage. It has zero heritage. Well, not quite zero because they've been selling them in China for a while. But the issue that I do have with these white label products is they will never they will never create any heritage because let's say that a company you know gets kind of popular selling them like uh, Turin is, for example, well then another company can come by and get the same product to sell. And so what you end up having is maybe two, three, four, five, who knows how many companies selling the exact same product under different names. And that's going to, first of all, dilute the market, but it's also going to really confuse the heck out of the consumers. And that is the one thing I really don't like about these white label products is the fact that I think customers are confused. 
I like the Alton versus the Wakako. Well, the Pico Presso for me so far is doing the best. It has an actual real bottomless uh, basket, and uh, it's really fun to use it. So, and if you preheat it enough, I've been using it at work, and I've been really preheating that sucker. And when you do that, then it um, can make some really tasty shots, and you can get some some nuances out of the beans. I was not expecting that. This one right here. Um, it's nice to have because you can use it anywhere. You know, it warms up the water on its own and it does a great job actually for capsules. I was surprised. It does better for me than on Nespresso machines. Um, but I don't think it's going to compete. Just my initial impression is I'm not sure it's going to compete with the Pico Presso in taste just based on this initial one because I did have that grind dialed in really nice uh, for the dual boiler and considering that Considering the temperature it came out at, I'm guessing it was like 45 degrees Celsius. It's just too low. You bought a puck screen and not sure if I should put it in wet or dry. Greens from Greece. Well, hello to Greece. I put my puck screens on dry. I think I've seen a video of Lance um, spraying those suckers first. And I think that he also did measurements to see if he would get a higher extraction ratio, whether it was wet or dry, and it seemed to be inconclusive or not really showing any much of a difference. So, okay, that's it. 21 minutes and 32 people online. Thanks for being with me. I do appreciate it. I'm going to go take my doggy for a walk, and I wish you guys a good Wednesday. Um, happy coffee drinking, happy espresso drinking. Arrivederci. Fietzeich, which is Bavarian for goodbye, um, as well as bless you, and bye now.